If you play any game on competitive level, you know what a slump is. Sometimes you hit a brick wall and period where you lose game after game despite trying your best and even worse players win over you. It is a frustrating feeling and we all know it. Not being able to play to your full capabilities make you question if you are good enough in the first place. It's known in every part of the life, whether you are in sports, finance or even personal life. Bad periods happen to everyone. Let's talk about how to deal with that. So we have two different approaches to fixing a slump. It comes from your drive for the game. Are you playing the game for entertainment or are you playing for competitiveness? One approach is extremely easy, while the other one is rather difficult. This one is easy. Just stop playing the game for some time. Get away from CS for a couple of days, maybe even a week, and just take a break. It is as simple as that. Playing another game will make you reset your recent experiences, which are most likely a bunch of losses because you're not playing that well. If you're playing competitively, it is more tricky. You can't just disappear from the game for a few days if you are on a team and you have an important tournament coming up. You need to practice both individually and with the rest of your squad. So how do you overcome slump now? To answer that question, we will have to take a look into psychology of performance. By the way, quick disclaimer, I am not a psychologist, but I did research for this video as well as connected a lot of parallels that I experienced during my own career that is almost decade long as professional contract player. Just a disclaimer, let's move on. So slump is heavily connected to the emotion of confidence. Confidence is the perception of your skill. It's not your actual skill, it's how good you think you are. It is a hard thing to balance because if you become overconfident, it can hurt your game as much as being underconfident. A lot of the time, newer players think they are way better than they actually are. Therefore, they become overconfident. On the flip side, you may have experienced and skilled players who undervalue what they actually know about the game and are underconfident. The goal of this video is to adjust your perception of your skill as close as possible to the actual skill set you have. The main tool we are going to use for that is to make you focus less on the result whenever you play. I think all of us had this game where you did some stupid, reckless moves, but they worked out and you crushed the enemy. But while those moves worked and you won a game, they are not necessarily good and they won't work the next 10 times you try them. This is where misalignment of your skill happens, which is very dangerous. On the other hand, you can play good CS for a large chunk of the game and still sometimes lose in the end. That can make you doubt yourself and start overthinking if you should change something in order to win next time. So how do we fix it? I will tell you what my cheat code is. I've had numerous slumps during my career and some of them happened at the worst timings possible during the season just before a huge tournament. Not only that, but I didn't know how to deal with them but I'm interested in performance and how to become better, so I started experimenting. The most success I've found is to have as much time off from actual gameplay as possible. It took me a long time to realize that the reason why I'm playing bad isn't because I suddenly lost my aim, it's because I'm not even in a mental state to aim properly in the first place. So playing more pucks, deathmatch or practice never fixed my issue. Instead, I watched others play. It had many positive side effects, for example, I learned new utility, new tricks or new strats, but there wasn't main point. The main point was to understand that these players that I'm watching aren't doing anything crazy compared to what I was doing. I didn't have to suddenly dump my whole playstyle away because it doesn't work anymore. I just had to see other pro players fail a couple of times and realize that not everyone is perfect. We all do mistakes and it made me hungry again, reigniting my pleasure to play the game every time and slump slowly drifted away. This is just me manifesting what I mentioned earlier. Become less result oriented and more oriented towards actual gameplay. If I can realize myself how skilled I am, I'm looking at other professional players and if they're doing things I would do in their shoes, I'm coming to a conclusion that I'm skilled enough to compete at the level of player I am analyzing. This works wonders for me and I felt like sharing it may help others, you included. In short, Find activities that are somehow marginally increasing your skill in the game without actually playing the game. This might be stuff like we mentioned, watching demos, but also watching other players stream, watch game related content, but it could be things that are not tied directly to CS at all, such as playing aim trainers or exercise, reading a book. All these things I'm doing or did in the past that had positive effects for me. Now, we know how to shift our mindset to get out of the slump, but 
How do we prevent it from creeping back so often? We turn to Jared Handler, performance psychologist who worked previously with Team Liquid. This is what he has to say about confidence. Confidence is the foundation of your mental game, so it's important to look out for anything that can weaken it. Ironically, this includes you. Being intensely self-critical can create a vicious cycle when it comes to building and sustaining confidence. Then he moves on and talks about a very interesting concept that I can relate to. It's called beaten dog syndrome, and it is exactly what it sounds like. Here's how the syndrome typically starts. After being intensely self-critical over a long period of time, you develop a fear of making mistakes because you want to avoid the pain of the criticism. This is akin to a dog that's regularly beaten by its owner and eventually becomes fearful when its owner enters the room. The dog is on the edge and nervous that any wrong move may provoke being hit. So when you are harshly self-critical after losing, you develop a fear of losing or looking stupid. This leads you to becoming more passive, risk averse and you second guess every in-game decision. It's all just to prevent you from doing mistakes because you want to avoid another self-inflicted beating. The solution, according to Tendler, and I can stand behind this as it helps me a lot, is to bring self-criticism to a reasonable manageable and more productive level. What I implemented myself was to give myself a pat on the back more often for a great place that I'm doing. And I also told my teammates to make sure to tell me I did good more often. I know it may sound egoistical to ask for these things, but it's all to offset harsh thoughts about myself whenever I do poorly. This creates a much nicer atmosphere for me to perform more confidently and also more consistently without slums bothering me nearly as much as they did in the start of my career. I want to end this video with another thought shared by another great esports performance coach, Edward Cleland, who coached teams like G2, Evil Geniuses or Complexity and is now part of Team Liquid. Pro gamers need to identify themselves as people more so than identifying as gamers. Why? A gamer identity is defined by results. Lose, emotional dumpster. Win, emotional high with side of relief. But people who are gamers aren't defined by their results, they are defined by how they respond to results. A gamer can't control their outcomes, a person can control how they react to outcomes. With this great quote, I believe it is only fitting that you start putting what you learned in this video to immediate practice. If you are serious about gaming or any kind of performance in the career you are pursuing, these are words of wisdom that will get you far. I'm glad you watched the video until the end and if you have another topic in mind that really interests you from a psychology perspective, let me know in the comment section down below and I will look into it. In the meantime, check some of my other videos I did on my channel when it comes to mental aspect of the esports. I think you'll love it. See you there. Bye-bye.